Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk to you about the upcoming free ship that we're going to be getting from the 2023 summer event. This ship is the Hesperian Intel Battlecruiser. As always, chapters are listed down below for those of you that want to skip ahead to any specific topic. The first thing I want to take a look at is the origin and theme that this ship has. This ship originates from Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2, Episode 7, where pleasant fountains lie, and the ship was a royal ship. It had a very heavy fantasy theme, and I can even show you a, a small uh, bit from the episode directly here. Uh, you can see a very, very heavy fantasy theme. They're, they're rocking like medieval outfits and all that, and got the, the appropriate swords for that era and all that, so uh, very, very heavy into that, that theme. And Cryptic has went all in with this theme. They have went through and renamed all of the abilities on the ship to match that theme. So the Battle Cloak, I believe is called the Cloak of Invisibility. The Gather Intel abilities it has have been renamed. Even the Mastery Package, the, the names of the individual like T1 through 4 Mastery uh, Package levels, those have actually been renamed on the ship. So... They went all out on making it match the theme that we saw in that episode. The next thing I want to go through and take a look at are the various ways that you can acquire the ship. If you're on PC and console and you're watching this in June or July of 2023, then you should be able to get this for free from the summer event. It's been confirmed that the PC summer event will be starting up on June 28th and running through July 28th. And from what I can tell looking at the wiki, it does look like console usually has their summer event at the exact same time as PC. So hopefully that is the same this year and the summer event is live at the same time on console. So if you want to get this for free, um, you just have to participate on the 2023 summer map on Ryza for 20 of the 30 days of the event and you'll be able to get the ship for free. It will, of course, you know, cost you time to go and do something on the map, but that's better than spending uh, the, the thousand lobby that the buyout cost. Now, there's a few different options for what you can do each day to earn your daily progression. You just need to do one of the eligible missions on the map to get the, the daily progress. The easiest one is usually flying high, but there are other options if you're wanting to diversify things. And the wiki does have a good breakdown on which missions qualified in the prior summer events and should qualify again this year. They're listed here with the hourglass behind them. So I'll include a link to the wiki down below if you want to take a look at the various missions on the map and get an idea of what these other ones require if you're wanting to go through and do those. So flying high is the one that I'd recommend. That can be done in just a couple of minutes each day, especially if you invest and grab a, a good uh, thing to fly around the map. Very easy to do. That's that's what I would recommend. Now, if you're unable to play the event or you just want to buy it out, there will be that lobby buyout option. It does cost a thousand lobby right off the bat, but each day that you're able to participate in the event, the buyout cost will go down by 50 lobby. So if you play it for 10 days and you need to buy out the remaining progress, you can do that for 500 lobby, and then you'll have the ship on an account wide unlock like any other event ship. So that is an option if you need to take advantage of it. There is not a Zen buyout for the summer and winter event ships. Usually it's just lobby. They could change that, but I imagine they'll use or keep the, the lobby buyout as the option here as that nets them more money. And if you miss the event and the buyout period, the ship will be available again in the future uh, for Zen or Dilithium. It's just that it's going to take a while for it to be added to the Mods or Phoenix stores. It usually is taking like two years for these event ships to be added to those stores. So if you miss the event, you're going to be waiting quite a long time to have another chance at getting the ship. The next thing I want to take a look at is the customization options that this ship has. By default, it has that green and blue appearance that you see at the uh, top right there. And that, of course, is not going to be the most appealing for everyone. 
thankfully, the green section that you see on the body there, and then this blue purple you see on the nacelles, those can both be customized and they can be customized each on their own. So you can make the body of the ship pink like you see here, and then you can change the nacelles to a different color. So you do have a few different ways to change this to a color scheme that is going to be more digestible for you. And of course, the ship does work with Vandy Shields. At the top left here is the Platinum Vandy Shield. For, for those of you that got that from the 20th uh, Cryptic Anniversary a couple years back. And that looks quite nice to me. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that this gold trim or gold detail here, this stays the same on all of these ships. And that is because to get the detail on it, they used a different modeling approach. And that modeling approach is not compatible with Vandy Shields and customization and the tailor. So that gold detail that you see on the ship is going to remain there regardless of what color you have the rest of the ship, regardless of what Vandy Shield you have on. But still, I think there's many ways that you can make that look quite nice. That Platinum Vandy Shield there looks really good. And I imagine there's plenty of other options out there with the wide variety of Vandy Shields in the game now. And moving on to the stats side of things, this is an Intel Battlecruiser. So this has a 5-3 weapon setup, three device slots, five engineering consoles, two science and four tack. It being an Intel ship, it does have an innate cloak. However, in this case, it's a battle cloak, which is a nice upgrade versus what you traditionally see. It also has the gather Intel mechanic. And being that this is a battle cruiser, it should be able to equip dual cannons and dual heavy cannons. Now, the downside is that this is, of course, you know, an event ship and event ships always have something that sets them below your traditional sea store lockbox and promo type ships. In this case, while this ship is an Intel battle cruiser, you'll note that it doesn't actually have a commander Intel seat, which is traditionally associated with a ship that would have Intel in the name. Usually if a ship has the specialization in the name, it will have full access to a commander seat for that spec so that you can actually use all of the abilities associated with that specialization. In this case, we have a commander engineer with no specialization, a lieutenant commander universal with Intel, a lieutenant commander TAC, a lieutenant science with pilot, and an ensign science. The bridge officer layout is still manageable, but clearly, you know, it, it does have that setback from having just a, a generic commander engineer there. Had the Intel seat been on that commander, the ship would have been even better. But as is, it's still perfectly capable with this layout. You're just not going to be able to do like a surgical strike setup on the ship because Surgical Strikes rank 1 is really not good. If you want to do Surgical Strikes, you want rank 3, and given even though that this, you know, this is an Intel ship, it doesn't actually have room to run all of the Intel things like Surgical Strikes 3, so just keep that in mind. Now, I do want to go and take a look at some comparable ships here. And for this comparison, I will be using Fluffle's Sortable Filterable Ship List. And I will have a link to this spreadsheet down in the description below if you want to mess around with it. Just make sure that when you open it up that you go and hit file and make a copy at the top left so that you can get a copy of your own to mess around with. If you request access, that's just going to annoy Fluffle and you're not going to get anything out of it. Just hit file, make a copy and hit that make a copy button and that will create a copy of it in your Google account so that you can go in and mess around with it. Okay, so for comparable ships here, I'm going to want to look at ships that have an Intel and pilot specialization combo on them. Um, so I'm going to set that up here in the filter. So this is only showing ships with Intel and pilot seating both on the ship. And if I go over here, I do also want to set this to only show me ships that have five forward weapons. So I'm going to remove the three and four options from the filter. 
And I'll set it so only dual heavy cannon ships are shown here. So you can see that there are a few similar ships that have pilot and Intel uh, spec combos with five forward weapons. Um, but most of these are, are more tactical leaning. And I think if we narrow the filter a little bit more, remove these ones that just have one aft weapon, narrows things down a little bit. One of the, the standouts here to compare against is the Nicole Acheros. You'll see here it has a Lieutenant Commander Intel seat and a Lieutenant Pilot seat, 5-3 weapons layout, just like what the Hesperian has. And some other ships that I would probably compare against are not listed here. One would be the, the Arbiter Battlecruiser. Um, I think the Fleet Avenger is the, the fleet one of that. And... You know, some some more modern options for like five, five, two or five, three type ships, you know, like the, the Terran Hydra. Um, I've talked about that being just a powerhouse in the, the sea store, and I think that'd be a good ship to compare against also. So let me move over to the compare tab here. Um, let me bring in the Hydra. And another one that would be worth comparing against probably be the the Bozeman, which I guess is the fleet. Soyuz. Okay. So the ship that most closely matches the Hesperian is the Nicole Atros. The Nicole Atros was one of the most expensive lockbox ships back in the day when it initially came out. And it has come down a little bit over time. It's still fairly expensive, but you can see that it, it very closely matches the Hesperian. And to be clear, the, the Nicole Atros, while it is a lockbox ship, it is from seven years ago. So you can see the amount of power creep that these event ships had, that this event ship in 2023 is very close to a lockbox ship from several years ago. And this isn't the first time we've seen this. The, the Burjai um, from the last winter event, that was very similar to the Mirror Strike Wing Escort. So... You know, these, these event ships are just continuing to get better over time. For the Hesperian, we don't have all of the stats here. They don't share the defense, mobility, power bonus stats on 10 forward, so that's why those are blank. But the bridge officer side of things is what really matters here. And you can see the Hesperian very, very similar to the Nicole Atros, and probably better. Because on the Nicole Atros, you had a commander engineer, a lieutenant commander universal with the Intel seat. So those those two match so far. But where they differ is that the Hesperian has a lieutenant commander tack, whereas the Nicole Atros gets a lieutenant universal. And rather than having an ensign universal, the Nicole Atros trades that lieutenant commander to have no ensign so that it has three lieutenants. So that's where the trade-off is. And given the way that the game has developed, the Hesperian has arguably the better bridge officer layout because that extra lieutenant commander seat is going to be more valuable. Now, um, the other stats here for the Hesperian and the Colatro is very similar, really. When we're looking at ship comparisons, um, you know, the, the weapons configuration, that, that obviously matters. But the bridge officers are the main thing. The, the bridge officer layouts are what to make or break a ship. So that's always what you really have to focus on when doing comparisons. The Fleet Avenger is also somewhat comparable here. You can basically see that the Hesperian, it, it to me, is basically just an improved version of the Fleet Avenger. So if you were a fan of the Arbiter or the Fleet Avenger from way back in the day, your build from that ship should be able to translate quite well over to the Hesperian. So, that, you know, again, if you were a fan of that ship, you'll probably like the Hesperian. They should be quite similar. Um, another engineering heavy ship that I'd like to, to bring into the comparison here is the Fleet Soyuz Intel Heavy Frigate. This is a ship that went into the sea store last year as the Bozeman. The fleet version of it is the Soyuz. And 
I think if you're looking for an engineer heavy ship to take advantage of the, the new isomag consoles, because the Hesperian does have five inch console slots and can get a sixth with the, uh, the T6X upgrade. So if you're doing those new engineering consoles, you know, you're probably going to want to look at ships that have, a, you know, like four or five, at least, um, engineering console slots and in the C store, if you were looking to get something better than the Hesperian right now that has similar engineering setups, I think the fleet Soyuz would be the, the route to go. If you're looking to, to spend money for, for a better ship, um, the fleet Soyuz has a much more flexible bridge officer layout. It's got Raider flanking or not. It's got flanking, but not Raider flanking. Um, so it's just 33%. It does have a built-in cloak, but the Hesperian has a battle cloak. So uh, the, the normal cloak I basically consider is garbage and not really relevant. Um, battle cloak is where cloaks start to get good. And unfortunately, the Soyuz and the Hydra do not have a battle cloak. So I think for a free ship, the Hesperian, you know, when I look at it in this setup, I think it's perfectly fine. You know, it's it's very comparable to a lockbox ship, the Nikulatros from several years ago. It's basically an improvement over some sea store ships that are, again, like several years old at this point. But if you're looking to buy a more modern sea store ship, the, the modern sea store offerings like the Terran Hydra or the Fleet Soyuz are both Intel sea store ships that are going to be more capable than than the Hesperian. But you know, for, for a free ship, the Hesperian is quite capable. And the fact that I'm, you know, even comparing it to the Hydra and Soyuz should, should say a lot. Like it, it's, it's not going to be as powerful as the Hydra or, or the fleet Soyuz. Cause they do have some advantages like a full commander Intel. Um, but for a free ship, the Hesperian is going to hold up pretty well against some of these competing options. The, the biggest limitation, of course, for it is this commander engineer with no spec seat on it. That is the, the weak point in the setup. And now we're at the point of the video where I tell you that the console and Starship trait are a must have because they're both insanely good for a variety of niche builds. And that is very much the case here. The console is the Dragon's Blood Flame Reactor. This console has passives for 20% Cat 2 bonus damage for Disruptor, Fire, Cold, Electrical, Radiation, and Psionic damage. So if your build is using any of those, this console is going to provide a fairly substantial boost. But that's not all. There is yet another passive which is plus 10 current engine power and plus five max engine power. And then we have the clicky that this console has, which is called Dragon's Breath, which has a very, very interesting visual, which I will show you now. It is the Breath of the Dragon clicky, and it shoots the Dragon's Breath out in front of your ship in a 50 degree cone, and it can hit targets up to five kilometers away. It lasts for 10 seconds, and it does scale up with EPG and engine power. Every second it's active, it is going to drain your engine power, and it will be more aggressive as it stacks up an engine power drain every second it's active but it does not turn off if you run out of engine power. Instead, the engine power will affect how quickly the console recharges. So if you have more than 25 engine power left once the 10 seconds of the console is done, then it will give you a faster cooldown or a shorter cooldown on the console so that you can use it again faster than you traditionally could. It's an interesting console. And the, the passives alone make this a must have if your build incorporates any of these, these damage abilities. You know, if you have a build that does electrical damage like the Nadarian from the last summer event, this console is boosting that. And that's not all. We have the Starship trait called Five Magics. When dealing damage with any of the five magics, 
the five magics being fire, cold, electrical, radiation, and psionic, it will apply the following buff for 15 seconds. Plus five current engine power per second. And then it provides a scaling cat 2 damage buff for disruptor, fire, cold, electrical, radiation, and psionic damage. So if you have 125 power, 125 engine power when this trait activates it is giving all of those above damage abilities or the those damage types it's giving a 33.75 percent cat 2 damage buff to and you can see the the way that the trait scales here it has a base damage buff of 15 percent and then for every point of engine power you have it scales up another 0.15 percent so this, you know, between the console and this trait, that's a fairly huge boost for Disruptor and those niche damage types, you know, fire, cold, electrical, radiation, and psionic. Those things don't have a ton of buffs. And this Starship trait and console are both providing massive Cat 2 damage buffs for all of those abilities. For all of those damage types. And then, of course, there are new disruptors on the ship called the Ray of Disintegration. These are apparently just reskin disruptors. There's no unique proc on them. The uh, the beta whole heel thing that you see here, that's just from the DOF that they have slotted. That's not from the, the weapon itself. Um, so there's no unique proc, but apparently they can be upgraded and re-engineered if you're interested. It was hard to see the visuals of them on the stream with everything going on, so... I don't have that. And if you're looking to set up disruptors, you know, Spiral Wave disruptors are still going to be the best there um, because Spiral Wave has just natively like more modifiers on it than other disruptor types. So not something I would be too worried about, but they are there if you're wanting to, to mess with some new disruptor visuals. And finally, I want to talk about my thoughts on the ship and my conclusion here. Um, undoubtedly, the visuals of the ship are not going to appeal to everyone. Uh, you know, but like I showed earlier in the customization section of the video, you can change how the ship looks quite drastically. You can change the, the green parts of the ship. You can change those to a completely different color. You can change the color of the nacelles. There's lots of ways that you can customize the colors on the ship, and you should be able to find a color scheme that works for you. And if not, you can always just put a vanity shield on it and call the day. The Hesperian Intel Battlecruiser itself is very much a capable ship. You know, it's competing with some of the older lockbox and sea store ships from a couple years ago. It's not going to beat something like the Hydra or the, the Fleet Soyuz that have come out in the past year or so, but it's more than enough to handle what content we have in the game right now. And you can set the Hesperian up perfectly fine to be a very capable energy weapon platform. However, um, you know, I'm not a fan of the fact that it is an Intel ship that doesn't actually have a commander Intel seat that does remove the ability for this ship to be an effective surgical strikes platform. The issue with things like surgical strikes is you either run rank three of it or you don't run it at all. Rank one and two of it are very underperforming, but rank three of it, you know, is extremely good. And this ship, even though it's named as an Intel ship, cannot run surgical strikes. However, you know, even though that the ship does have, you know, a couple issues with the, the Intel designation and a couple things that I would wish were different with the bridge officer setup, I do have to say that this ship is absolutely something that you should pick up. The console and starship trait that it has are going to be massive for some of the niche playstyles or for anyone running a disruptor setup. The trait and console boost a lot of niche damage types quite a bit. And they also make Disruptor even more competitive in the current meta. Overall, you know, I would definitely recommend you go through and you play the, the summer event for the 20 days so that you can get this ship for free. You know, the again, the, the visuals may not be the most appealing to you, 
but having the console and starship trait off of it on hand for future builds is going to give you more options, especially as they add in more abilities over time that take advantage of those damage types. So, you know, you may not care about the, the ship here, but maybe, you know, half a year from now, you want to go through and set up a fire build with all the Fakiri stuff that's come out. Well, the console and trait off of this massively boosts that up. Or maybe you have a Nadarian from the last summer event and you want to boost that up even more. Well, the, the Starship trait and console off of the H Hesperian do massively boost that. So, again, pick the ship up. Even if you don't like it, the secondary accessories on it are really good and are undoubtedly going to prove useful over time as more things come out that make those niche damage types a little less niche and move them into mainstream gameplay. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. Again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. More videos coming out soon. See you guys around.